I gotta say, I saw this hit the meme factory, and I loved it, you know? I loved it so much, because there's, there's something about it. <laughs> Why Hoyeon Jung's fa look is unique. Analyzing Celebrity Faces Episode 9. What makes Hoyeon Jung so attractive? I gotta wonder, man. It, they've got, like, a series on this, right? Uh, about what makes Michael B. Jordan's face attractive. A comprehensive breakdown of every nose shape defining beauty. I don't like this stuff, I gotta say. You know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. There are some general things humans seem to find attractive, but honestly, you can look around the place and find people who deviate from that and are still considered pretty attractive. This obsession with face shapes? Plus, well, I guess we'll find out, won't we? Let's talk about Ho Yoon Jung. Sure. You may know her as Squid Games Player 67. I do I've seen her that. in a couple of fashion weeks in the past, but the answer for why she's so attractive is actually really quite simple. Uh -huh. She's extremely symmetric, more so than most models, with a masculine facial width to height ratio. In other words, her face is very short and wide with a mix of neotenous or juvenile and dimorphic features. Wow, I hate this already. Can you imagine thinking of... <laughs> Look, I'll give him a chance. Hold on and above average dentofacial growth. In short, she fits Western ideals of female beauty more so than the Eastern ones, and I'll explain what I mean by that in just a bit. If uh, you're new to the channel, we break down- I'm pretty sure Ho Yeon Jung's considered attractive in Korea as well. Beauty in a more scientific way, using research literature. So strap in, I'm going to explain why each of these points contributes to her unique but quite intimidating look and why in Squid Game, her look worked so well in depicting a cutthroat rogue character. Okay. To start off her analysis, let's talk about symmetry. Symmetry is important in modeling for a number of reasons. From an evolutionary- What, what is the slant on this channel? Let me just know the direction we're coming from so I can find- let, Hold on. Taking a look at the age-old question of what makes a face beautiful through anthropology and cognitive psychology. I guess there are ways this could be valid. Let's 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 watch. You know, I'm I'm gonna try to keep my mind open. From a psychology point of view, researchers such as Gillian Rhodes have identified it as one of the fundamentals of an attractive face. Okay. A symmetric face is an indicator of strong genetic health, but more importantly, a symmetric face is one that's free of any malocclusions, malformations, or disruptions like cleft palate which link back to poor genetic health indicators, as we've covered in our full breakdown on the different types of symmetry over here. Okay. I think there's a little bit of a middle ground between having a perfectly symmetrical face and having a cleft lip, right? I think we can understand most people believe that cleft lips aren't considered conventionally attractive. It seems odd to be, well, you've got like symmetrical faces, but like look at what non-symmetrical faces look like. And then you show like a cleft lip, like, okay. I guess. The symmetry component is also partially influenced by your upbringing. Healthy dentofacial development is influenced by the diet that you eat. And as we've covered previously, 75% of asymmetries occur in the lower jaw. Wait, is this guy citing his own sources? Wait, this is his article. Earlier he was citing... So are, are, is he citing articles that he's... Have us analyze your face or order a morph here. They have a Patreon, a small Twitter account, a brand dedicated to exploring human aesthetics and beauty culture through anthropological data. This is retweeting the red, the red skin. <laughs> That's from 20, mid 2020. Their last retweet was the fucking, the red scare girl. Damn bro, you used to look like a Greek god. Now you look like you listen to podcasts. I remember this tweet. I'm so curious about this. Yeah, it's the one, the one good tweet. Uh-huh. So this is like a whole thing. This is like a whole, okay. I, I, let me get the vibes from this, okay? I am not an expert on any of this. However, I do want to vibe check. Unsurprisingly, because it's subject to a lot of uneven forces from all directions as you start chewing hard and soft foods. So having symmetry is a double benefit. It indicates strong nature and nurture qualities that you would want to pass on to your offspring. From personal experience in the modeling industry, Symmetry is really important for frontal shots, which is much more important in print. Okay, wait. I strongly disagree with the fundamental premise being laid out here, okay? The argument is that models have symmetrical faces because they tend to describe or suggest. Oh, could you close the window while you're over there? They tend to suggest more healthy features. Have you guys seen what models look like? 
like runway models, they are bone thin, okay? They actually have to keep the windows closed when models are walking down the runway so they don't get blown away by, by a stiff breeze coming from outside, okay? Models do not live like healthy lifestyles all the time. In fact, oftentimes they, they, they don't. They have, there are really arbitrary, like asinine physical beauty requirements that are associated with that, um, with, with that, with that, you know, profession. You guys understand what I'm talking about, right? Like models don't, models, like, I'm not trying to throw shade at anyone here, okay? I think that being a runway model is a legit job. I don't think that if you're like unhealthily skinny, that makes you a bad person or whatever. I'm not doing any of that shit. However, like, I know enough. I know a little bit about runway modeling because I had a friend back in high school and college who did some shoots and was kind of like a little bit involved in that scene. And there's a lot of stuff that goes on there that really has nothing to do with health. It tends to prioritize like gaunt, angular features, height being lanky, being very skinny. Um, sometimes there are even like artificial deformities that they'll do. Like for a while, I remember that a front centered tooth gap was considered attractive. So there were actually cases of models artificially widening it through both medical and like conventional procedures. Like, so I don't, I don't think that like the, I don't think like the modeling industry promotes health so much as it promotes the modeling industry. You know, I, I don't want to show photos because like, I don't want to shit talk any of the models here. Cause I think you're doing a valid thing, but yeah, I, I, I don't, the, the, the Evo psych perspective on this just feels a bit odd to me. In editorial, not so much for runway because in fashion and runway, you're going to be gone in a second, so nobody's really assessing. Yeah, like this is not, but you're missing the point. He's saying they have symmetry as a consequence of generations of health and wealth, right? Not that they're eating well and healthy now. I guess? But so is he saying like, well, this is indicative of health and that's why it's desired, but all the other stuff that's not indicative of health is not desired? Like, it seems like you're kind of picking and choosing, right? He addresses your argument. Okay, I'll listen. I'll listen. All right. How is this beautiful? Well, I think they're pretty. It's just you have to understand. Oh, just, just, just watch the thing. Watch the thing. Seeing your symmetry while you're walking on a runway. Mastering the perfectly symmetrical dead on look is also very difficult because a lot of models, minor eyelid asymmetry or jaw asymmetries are very common. So having a perfectly symmetrical face, even in a group of some of the most symmetrical faces on the planet, is a big factor in looking strikingly different. Oyon also has an unusual facial dimension. Okay, so so he's not saying that... Okay, okay, I think I understand now. He's not saying that all of the standards for modern beauty are defined by things that indicate health. He's just saying that symmetry in particular is something that's associated with genetic health. Okay, okay. I th okay, I think... I thought, I thought he was... Okay, I thought he was saying, like, anthropology is the reason why runway models are considered so beautiful. It's because of, like, genetic health or whatever, which, yeah. Unusual in the sense that it deviates from the Korean beauty standard of thin, narrow, and tall face shapes, in other words the oval face shape, as we've covered in our East Asian beauty standards video. Her face is actually more masculine with increased malar or cheekbone prominence, which funnily enough is something that many East Asians get reduced in what's known as malar reduction surgery to achieve a narrower face and that oval face shape. An oval face shape increases impressions of trust and femininity at first glance, whereas her facial dimensions have quite the opposite effect. So despite not fitting the Korean or East Asian standards in theory, her features fit very strongly with beauty preferences in the West for female models, most of which... I think I understand the argument being made here. Hold on. Korean models. I don't know much about, like, the Korean... I guess I know more about Japanese or whatever, but, like, let me see. Uh, Korean models. Well, one of the first people that... Yeah, okay, hold on. Yeah, I guess I, guess I see what they're saying with, like, the oval face kind of thing. It's really difficult to tell with stuff like this because a ton of, like, foreign standards for beauty are influenced by Western white beauty standards, you know? Like, you had centuries and millennia in these cultures of them thinking a certain thing was beautiful, and then white people, like, fucking set their country on fire or something. And then they're like, oh yeah, skin bleaching is all the rage or whatever. I, I'm simplifying it a little bit, but yeah. If you'll notice, have wide and more masculine appearing faces with great identifacial protrusion. Why does your chat think this is sussy? Because using anthropology and evolutionary psychology to talk about beauty standards is 99.9% .9 of the time a dog whistle for race realism. Overwhelmingly, stuff like this is associated with phrenology and with trying to prescriptively assign different racial groups, like beauty categories based on their appearances, you know? I have seen so many fucking pull memes and, like, alt-right videos 
talking about how like the natural shape of the white woman is like the object of beauty and then like everyone else is not or whatever you know now this channel isn't doing that at least they, they haven't done that yet i mean i don't know if they're going to do that later but they're definitely treading on territory that does get a lot of really bad faith representation if that makes any sense they're they're it's they i don't think they've done anything wrong yet uh it's just that they're 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 walking on a on a narrow but yeah let's let's see let's see so far, by the way, I think this video is fine. Um, I, I, the, the, the only thing I could say is like, there's, there's a lot of blur between prescriptive and descriptive stuff here that I think the video is not jumping that gap, but I could see how other people might, but that's not really the responsibility of the video to not. Yeah, so we'll see, we'll see. This very characteristic of a wide but short face has been identified in the research literature as far back as the late 1980s as having a high facial width to height ratio, which is a masculinizing feature that makes the face seem much more intimidating. However, instead of using the traditional facial width to height ratio, a facial index ratio is better at showing what I mean, uh -huh. as the facial width to height ratio is more concerned about the dimensions of the mid face, and the facial index considers the dimensions of the face as a whole. Having a wide face not only stretches the cheek. What is our facial index ratio? Wait, hold on. I want to know. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to find out. We have to do. Wait, do I. Is there a photo of me? On, if I Google image search, is there one of me just looking straight forward? Well, there are a few, but I have my mouth open. Here, we'll, we'll take a new photo. We're going to take a new photo, okay? Hold on. Can we. Chat, I need you to screenshot me and. Post an imager link of my face. Okay? Come on. Wait, glasses off? Okay, glasses off. Okay. Come on. This is what I look like? Jesus Christ, why do you guys watch me? Alright, we got one, we got one. Imagine. Uh, open with. Some studio paint. That was a quick screen cap right there. Oh my god. I've got those little dents in my nose from the, from the, um, from the glasses. Okay, so here's what we do. Create two new layers, okay? In layer one, we was right is right here, right? Where's where's the line drawn? Right below the eyes? Okay, right below the eyes. Okay, we draw it right here. There, that's even. And then to the hairline, my chin ends right about here. I'm guessing. Wait, we need this one, the new layer. There. And then my chin right here. Okay. Now that we've established that, all we have to do is rotate this line to see its relative length compared to the other one. What do you think that is? What is that, a 1.3, maybe? We can also find out, there's probably a better way of doing this, but we can also find out by cutting off the excess, and lining it up like that. So that's the excess. What, that would be 50%, and that would be 25%. So like 30, like 1.3. There we go. We're at a 1.3 ratio, boys. Let's go. Cheekbones out to have greater malar prominence, but also stretches the eyes out to look narrower and wider, assuming that the face has healthy and proportional dentofacial development without any hypertellurism or other abnormalities. Researchers such as Genial et al. have identified that higher facial width to height ratios make faces appear much more untrustworthy, but also intimidating, which is exactly how Hoyun was portrayed through Player 67. As you can imagine, this makes the face intimidating, much like the eyes of a jaguar or some other predator, an idea which we've covered in our analysis of another model, Jordan Barrett, with an equally wide and intimidating face. I feel as if at this point I've- There's, um, I, I wonder if this video is going to talk about why people find Hyun Jung attractive, when generally speaking, features like this are considered unattractive in women. Dark eye circles and intimidating leering look. These are usually things like that are considered kind of like off-putting, right? Like, it, don't like the big doe-eyed expressions tend to do better, like with women, in in terms of like conventional attractiveness. Now, I find her very attractive. I'm not gonna. I'm. I'm not. We're not talking about me here. I'm just saying. Like, I wonder. Wonder how you bridge that gap exactly. As if at this point, I've covered everything on the channel for you guys to just come up with your own analysis. Quite recently on the podcast, I spoke about the concept of averaged faces. In other words, a composite of many faces together looks better than an individual face on its own. However, the most attractive title is unique, not conventionally attractive. Yeah, but the video talked about how attractive people find her, you know? A lot of models have more masculine features in general. Yeah, I wonder if that's like, is it because modeling companies, like the modeling industry, tends to favor stoicism? 
usually like runway models, men or women, have this like fucking blue steel look all the time. Like constantly, you know? This 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 zo this permanent fucking zoolander gaze that they're that they're always rocking like hard. I, that might just be like a trend, I don't know. Or like that that might just be like an industry preference. Attractive faces actually deviate away from the averaged faces. Pay attention to the wording there. This is because the most attractive models, particularly women, have above average dentifacial protrusion as identified by Peck and Peck 1970. This is a concept that I've never actually talked about explicitly, but have hinted See, like, at in the past. You know what I mean? Like, she looks like somebody's killing her dog in front of her and she doesn't mind. And perhaps you've noticed this yourself when looking at female models in their castings. Most Western models have very defined dentifacial features and jaw sizes and dimensions that can almost rival their male that counterparts. Fucking walk, dude. In the East, model selections are much more cute and soft with less protrusive dentifacial features and this is simply because of different beauty standards. Hoyun falls into the former category, giving her that dominating and intimidating look but with a number of soft and neotenous facial features that can still make her appear quite feminine. I guess that makes sense. Most women, on average, will have less defined jaws and forward protrusive dentifacial growth than their male counterparts. That's just how it is. However, those that do not produce more striking and intimidating faces that Westerners tend to find more attractive. From Peck's paper, Miss Massachusetts 1964 on the top right, and virtually all of the other beauty pageant winners all have very wide faces with relatively narrow and masculine eyes. This isn't to say that they're more attractive than narrower oval shaped faces and rounded feminine eyes that you'd see in the east, but this is an American beauty standard with a preference for masculine dentifacial This data is so dated. I mean, I think I get the arguments being made. I can't like double check the data right off the top of my head, but I, I think I understand the argument being made. Structures and wide bizygomatic widths. All of these faces have very defined inferior mandible borders or jawlines and protrusive lower jaws that line up with the glabella or the base of the forehead indicating a normally projected jaw. Besides, when isn't this good news for all the fucking trans girls, right? Because they're saying that like all the runway model chicks have like slightly more protrused like chin and like facial structure, right? So like if there's a difference in that between being AMAB and AFAB, then like there you go, kablamo. Trans women, just born models. Congratulations. There you go. I, I assume it's that easy. <laughs> women typically tend to have more retrusive jaws that fall just a bit short of this line, but not these exceptional examples, which are considered some of the most attractive women for their time. Having a more retrusive jaw, like the average woman is expected to have, makes the jawline appear less defined, as the skin and soft tissue is not stretched as tightly or tautly, and makes the face appear a lot softer. Does anyone know if that jaw maxing shit is legit? Have any of you guys ever browsed incel forums where they talk about like if you chew a bunch of gum or something, like it'll it'll make your it'll make your jaw bigger or whatever? Does does anyone uh does anyone know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it, it can work, but it's not safe. Wait, how is it not safe? Wait, what are they what are they doing that's that's not safe? Markiplier had a phase where he actually tried to do that. Does Markiplier really need to be more attractive? Is that really something Markiplier needs to do? This is a zero-sum game, okay? The more attractive Markiplier gets, the less attractive we all become. Does Markiplier seriously need to edit? Look at, the, look at this fucking beefcake, dude. Where's the phrenology video on this guy, okay? I want to know why he's so captivating and beautiful to look at. Jesus Christ. Jesus, he's so fucking hot. I think that's the reason why I never watched PewDiePie when I was like 12 or whatever. It was because I was watching him, you know? Less intimidating, more submissive, albeit a bit more feminine too. On the contrary, above average faces have longer mandibles, oftentimes with greater gonial- Look at that fucking Dylan Burns jaw, holy shit. ...width or jaw width for both men and women, which is why the likes of Margaret Robbie to Ho Yoon, despite her being a Korean actor and model, so a not Caucasian like in these examples, are so captivating to a Western audience. Peck's paper defines facial harmony as an orderly and logical flow of facial features, which is a very subjective term. Personally, at Coves, we define harmony using proportion tests for our facial aesthetic reports, some of which we've actually covered here, but looking at Hoyun's side profile, it's very clear to see that her orthodontic profile has a very pleasing balance with her soft tissue profile. In other words, one particular facial... <laughs> The the the, te the 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 technical descriptions. I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with them, but holy shit, they do sound weird. What was the um? 
The thing that I'm interested in is like, so I, I get I get what he's saying about like um Western beauty standards have like preferring less like more more like stoic and less soft looking models or whatever. I'm trying to find a Korean model who looks close to the image that he used. Okay, we'll just use this person. Okay, there we go. Right? This kind of looks like the person they flashed on screen like 30 seconds ago. The thing that I don't get though is like, isn't there like a huge thing about people in the West being super attracted to this like type of look, right? A lot of Asian women are considered hyper feminine because, um, well, for a lot of really complicated reasons, but I, I guess maybe for different reasons, right? Whenever I see people thirsting over girls who look like this online, though, it's usually like the creepy, like libertarian dudes with Asian wives types. You know what I mean? Where they're like, uh, where they're like, you know, yeah, feminism hasn't ruined these bitches, you know, like, yeah, yeah, like that kind of shit. Um, I don't know if I see it get talked about that much outside of that, but yeah, I don't, I don't really know. Interesting stuff. Facial feature does not dominate over the others such as a prognathic or protruding jaw. Lastly, her face has a lot of neotenous features, which is why it's softer and rounder than typical models. Facial neoteny refers to the presence of juvenile features that influence the way that that face is perceived. More babyish faces with juvenile features, such as a youthful hairline with no frontotemporal recession, or a high hairline and rounded forehead, may be taken less seriously and... Is that... Do I have a juvenile hairline? It's like... It's like... My hairline is is exactly where it was when I was a baby. I mean... No, you have a widow's peak? Well, sure, but... What's the difference for, like, a, a woman? Women's hair doesn't really recede. I mean, I can't... It can a little bit, I think, but... Women literally go bald wash? Yeah, but not in the way... Not in the way that guys, like, it's not as much of a... ...obviously less intimidating, which is not what we want for her role in Squid Game. Buckle fat is informally referred to as baby fat, as Buckle the volume fat. loss in this region is one of the more notable signs of an aging or maturing face. You can also get it surgically removed early on to give yourself a less neotenous face like... Jesus Christ. Wait, was this, was this post-surgery? No offense, but she looks like a skull. In the in the in the latter video there, or in the in the latter photo, right? I don't know. I feel I feel like I feel like if you if you look like this, I don't know what you would ever go to it. Not really. You don't think there's a little bit skull like? A little bit. It's the eye shadow. No, it's the it's the skull. No, no, it's not the eye shadow. It's it's the skull. Like many celebrities and models do, but to be fair, I don't actually know if Margaret Robbie had the surgery done or she just aged oh. naturally and gracefully in this example. Then Maybe why you've noticed it for yourself as Julie Bowen's cheeks go from soft and puffy to gaunt and sharp 11 seasons later for Modern Family. In Squid Game, her buckle fat appears to be a lot less, and this could be a combination of camera angles, weight loss, high contrast, and color grading in post-production, or what I would guess is a little bit of dehydration, which gives the cheek a hollower, almost starved look as the malar eminences or the cheekbones really start to pop. Obviously, this is a mature facial trait, the opposite of a neotenous facial feature, and we take number 67- This guy's an unhealthy obsession. I mean, it's a company that specializes in like facial analysis, right? I don't necessarily know if that's an obsession. It's just kind of an odd topic. I'm interested in it though. Because people were memeing about this video on Twitter. I didn't know if it would go into phrenology or whatever, but I think this video hasn't actually trended towards any weird race science. A lot more seriously as a result. Compare this to her companion, number 240, who is not only portrayed as a smaller, frailer girl with more neotenous and girlish features, then, well, spoiler, we don't really expect her to do any of the cutthroat things that Se Bjork does, and true to her character, she is a very passive person. These casting decisions are very deliberate and complement the camera angles and acting personas that have been written up by the writers for every single character. When an actor is said to have the look that these casting directors are going for, these are the factors that these directors actually consider, although a lot more subconsciously 
I'm sure they're not calculating facial width to height ratios and comparing them to- Guys, nothing got spoiled. Holy shit. Nothing, nothing, nothing about what we saw is going to affect your shit. Okay, shut up. Deflometric standards. So hopefully that clears up your burning questions of why Hoyun is so attractive, especially why the West is all of a sudden smitten by a model and new actor they would have never heard of before. Her on-screen persona as a dominant and capable woman also adds to the appeal and we've covered this on-screen influence in virtually every analysis of a celebrity, especially in the Ryan Gosling analysis. But understand that the way she is portrayed in Squid Game is certainly not how she looks in reality. The lack of sleep, starved and tired look in a- Alright, that's enough. I think um, this is a really good argument for why representation matters too, I think, you know? There have been a ton of people on the TL thirsting over characters from Squid Game, which I think is cool because our tastes and our interest in people are defined in large part by what we're familiar with, you know? We have to be exposed to something to find it attractive after all, otherwise we don't really know that it exists. So if all we're consuming is Western media, then we're not really, you know? We don't really have much racial representation in the media that we consume, you know? Like, there are Asian people in Western media, but... Um, how do I put this? Check pinned comment? Oh, hold on. To address the Twitter criticism, the video is total of why Hyun is attracted to Western audience, not to Korean or East Asian. Western beauty stands multiple to racial or ethnic features. Twitter incorrectly strawmans video, uh, that the video is fitting her to Eurocentric beauty standards, which is incorrect. Eurocentric beauty standards prefer features closer in shape to size Eastern beauty standards, which is false. Personal favorites of mine, she's hot because she's hot now. Stop. She can't be attractive. She's not white. This okay, I'm bored now. The video is fine. There's nothing wrong with the video. It's odd because it's an odd topic, but I don't think there's anything wrong with it necessarily. Anyway, I think that stuff like this is interesting because, um, you know, what we consider to be potentially attractive or interesting can really be influenced by what we see. In Western media, we don't really have that much racial diversity, you know? Or, well, we have racial diversity sometimes, but we don't have much in the way of ethnic diversity, which I think is also really, really important, you know? Like, we have Asian actors and actresses in Western media, but they tend to be Asian American, which means that their cultural predilections are, I mean, they're Americans. If you're, if you're, if you're born in America, you're a goddamn American. You're with me, you know? Um, which means they're probably gonna be influenced by the same like kind of fashion and aesthetic preferences that are normalized in the West, you know? But if you watch media from other cultures, you'll find that it's not just like the race, because people of whatever race can be any culture, you know, it's, 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 it's like a combination of like ethnic and racial, cultural, linguistic things that all combine to give us a different experience of what like humans can be, um, which is really limited when all you watch is Marvel movies, you know, and uh, probably a lot of people out there who are like, dude, I get lots of racial diversity, okay, I saw, I, I saw Doctor Strange, okay, dude, those like crazy China martial arts dudes were like Asian and like, you know, Captain Falcon's black and like Hawkeye's. Mar I say Hawkeye is Hispanic. No, he's fucking not. What? Are, what are we? What, what, uh, wait, are there? Wait, are there any Hispanic? Um, are there? Are are there any Hispanic um people in the? Are there not? Ant-Man's friend? Oh, are... Miles Morales isn't in the Marvel movies. Wait, is there seriously no Hispanic superhero? How many Hispanic people are in America? Wait. No way. No way. 60 million? That's a fifth of our country. Wait, 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 wait. No way. There has to be at least one, right? Speedy Gonzalez. <laughs> Stop. 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 We're done. Stop. Stop. It's over. It's over and we're done. End the segment. Stop. You're all racist. You're all racist. You're all racist. Stop. Also, hey, Shu. We measured, we phrenologied my face earlier. We, we measured my face, facial, we measured my face. Gamora? Is Gamora, I think she's an alien. Oh! I get it, no nothing. On a bit of an edgy streak with you, aren't we? Mm, I get it.
I get yeah, 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 I get it. Oh, you got, got an edgy little boy over there, huh? Yeah. Her actress is Hispanic. Oh, okay. That's... <laughs> Gamora's played by a Spanish person. It doesn't, it doesn't count when you put them in green makeup, okay? If anything, there's like a long-standing Hollywood trope of having aliens played by non-white people that's problematic in its own right. So we're... Okay. So... Stop. 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 